Hey friends, today we're looking at another USB microscope for SMD soldering. This one was sent to me by Joya Lens and it's their model JL249MS, which boasts a large magnification range, 24 megapixel camera, and a 10 inch monitor. My critique of this product will primarily focus on its usefulness in electronics applications, such as board inspection and soldering. In no particular order, these are just a few categories I'll be considering as I start testing out this scope. And I'll let you know right away, the price range of this one is anywhere from $135 to $200, depending on the monitor size you want and what kind of sales are going on. I have another video where I test out some lower cost options and I'll link that on the screen and down below if you want to check it out. Now let's get into the unboxing and see what this scope has to offer. So first we have some informational packets on top, very fun. In here is the scope and monitor which is quite large compared to what I was using before. In the back there are a number of cables for power, video, and I assume light control. Little power brick here, a little remote there. I always appreciate the inclusion of spare parts. These appear to be thumb screws for part of the mounting arm adjustment, so if those ever wear out, we'll be in good shape. These are pre-prepared biological slides and the associated mounting clips. I don't think I'm going to show much or any of this in detail because again, my focus here is on SMD soldering, but it's pretty neat. There's another cable and a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. That's pretty cool that they actually include this. Usually you have to go buy your own. And I think this is a lens cap or maybe just a storage container. This is a separate light module for the biology slides. Again, probably not gonna be using this, but just thought I'd point it out. Here we have two more lenses for different magnification levels. There's a third one already on the scope that we'll see in just a bit. Getting into the mounting parts now, down here is the upright shaft. This part is the main scope mount, and it has various adjustment options we'll be looking at very soon. And lastly, we have the base plate with the worm lights pre-installed. And that is everything in the box. Behold! These are all the parts, and to put it together, we just... Okay, fine, we'll do it the real way, and since we are very responsible, we also have the instruction manual close at hand. First, we take the upright shaft and just screw it in here. Very nice. Now the main mounting piece can slide in like this and we just tighten up that thumb screw. Super easy. We'll unbag the monitor, rotate the scope out so it's facing down, and we need to undo these thumb screws to remove the lens so that the scope can slide through the mounting hole. We will do that, and on this side there are two more thumb screws to tighten up and secure the scope in place. Now we'll get that lens back on using the thumb screws, and changing out lenses later will follow the same process. I would prefer a quick connect since the thumb screws do take a little time to fasten and unfasten, but it's a fairly minor complaint, and having these multiple options at all is a net positive. Further, once you're dialed in on something you like, swapping lenses probably becomes pretty infrequent anyway. The assembly is essentially complete, but I'll point out these metal clips you can install on the base plate to hold down your workpiece. My preference is to leave them off so that we can freely use the whole workspace. Let's quickly cover the mounting adjustments here. First of all, the worm lights let us direct the source where we want it, and seem to be pretty good at staying where you put them without any egregious spring back. There's a thumb screw by the upright shaft for coarse height adjustment. We'll just tighten it right there. And there's also a collar below you can use to set a hard stop for the lower limit. This large thumb screw is for fine height adjustment. There's a smaller thumb screw behind it to set resistance against the fine adjust so that it won't roll down on its own. And lastly, there's another screw on the side here for forward and backward adjustment. I'm just going to take that to its limit for no reason. <laughs> it actually goes really far forward. You might notice the upright shaft is tilted at a slight angle from the manufacturer. That can be adjusted with a socket wrench at the base plate if you like. Overall, this mounting arm is quite good. I would prefer a rack and pinion screw for the entire height range instead of just fine adjust, but the overall freedom you have with this mount makes up for it. Last note is that the base plate is huge compared to what I've seen on other scopes, which should lead to less frustration with workpieces wanting to tilt off the edge and that kind of thing. Overall, it's a really good physical setup. Let's finally turn this thing on and see how it shakes out with visual quality and recording. We'll just plug it into the wall for now. The barrel jack gives power to the lights and the micro USB powers the monitor. Sadly, there's no USB-C, but at least the shape of the provided cord physically prevents you from trying to plug it in the wrong direction. I have a main board from a Game Boy Advance here to use for a first look. We'll get it in focus and things already look pretty decent. Even when I move away the lights, the picture quality is largely maintained. And of course, with the lights, we do have a tiny controller which adjusts brightness. Let's get a quick look at something with smaller components. And again, we can dial in the focus pretty quick here. 
I have my front light on now just so we can see the face buttons. Pressing the camera button here will, unsurprisingly, take a photo. Recording video is a little less intuitive, and we have to press the OK button to start. So you can see the record clock has started. I'm just going to move the board around randomly for a second, and then show you a comparison. Here's what that same footage looks like coming from the SD card. Not bad. Holding down the M button brings up the menu, and we can adjust the filtering, sharpness, resolution, and a number of other parameters here. The default setting on this scope is 1080p 60fps, which is very good and exactly what we want. We can even go to Ultra HD, which is 2160p, but it limits us to 24fps. On the remote, you need to supply your own batteries, and it will do everything you can do with the face buttons, but without inducing any vibrations to the scope, which could affect the picture or video quality. So, it's nice to have. Let's talk about using this scope with a computer. First off, you need to unplug the micro USB from the Wern light cable and use a second USB, which is provided with the product, from the scope monitor to your computer. So you will need two USB slots available, but the one going to the base plate can use wall power if you don't have enough slots freed up on your PC. Still, it makes cable management a little finicky, and out of everything I've seen so far on this scope, implementing an all-in-one USB slash power cable seems like the biggest area for improvement. When connected, we have an option to view the media on the SD card or set it to webcam mode. I'm going to do the latter and start simple by just checking it out in the Windows camera app. It defaults to the laptop camera, but we can switch that with just one click up here. And we have the scope displaying to our PC now. If we open the camera settings, there's just one thing I want to check. As I suspected, when using it as a webcam, we only get 30 FPS at 1080p instead of 60. Not the end of the world, but worth pointing out the limitation if you plan to use it with OBS or otherwise as a webcam. One of the last things I want to show is the provided software, and it's simply called Microscope Measure. That is a great name. I didn't even know I wanted this, but it's actually pretty cool. So I'll switch over to screen recording and show you why I say that. So here's the software interface, and I'm looking at a Nintendo 2DS board where the connector on the lower left is damaged and missing a latch. I can use this software to help me find a replacement part by measuring it. First, I'll calibrate with the machine rule under the scope. The scale is 64 of an inch, which converts to 0.397 millimeter, so I will tell that to the software. Then I can draw a line between two graduations on the ruler, hit finish, and now it knows what a 64 of an inch is, and thus any other distance within its measurement range. Now I can use the measure tools to get some information on this connector. The first thing I want is the pitch. So that came in around 0.5 millimeter. So I will check in one more area to make sure, and it's dead on 0.5 millimeter this time. So now for the body of the connector, we can measure the length and the width. And in just a few seconds, I know that this connector has a footprint of 3 by 3.6 millimeter four pins with a 0.5 millimeter pitch. Armed with that information, I can go to DigiKey, look up a replacement connector, and swap it out. I'm not going to do that because this board is already beyond salvage, but I just wanted to give a quick example of how this could be useful. And this software is something that a lot of other microscopes would not include, so something to keep in mind. I think I covered most of my thoughts as I went along, so I won't recap everything, but I'll add that the definition and video quality of this scope is pretty amazing. I would probably have to recommend the 246 model over the 249 shown here, simply because it's 50 plus dollars cheaper, and as far as I can tell, the only difference between the two is the screen size. If I get updated information on that from Joya Lens, I will pin a comment to clarify. But overall, this scope gets a would recommend from me. I really hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and take care.